Okay, I'm going to show you how to graph some constraints on Excel. This is like a real basic introduction on how to graph uh, constraints and find the feasible region. Uh, I got this problem from this book right here, An Introduction to Management Science, the 15th edition, by David R. Anderson, Dennis J. Sweeney, and Thomas A. Williams. A real good book for quantitative methods. So I just wanted to tell you that's where I got this problem from, and I'm showing this to, I'm teaching a class that I'm using this book, so actually I'm recording this video to show my class how to do this. Uh, just how to get used to Excel, uh, and how to use it to graph and kind of analyze a constraint. So here's the problem. It says show a separate graph of the constraint lines and the solutions that satisfy each of the following constraints. And we have these constraints, and I went ahead and redid them down here. Uh, uh, you might want to pause the video and work along with me and put this into Excel, just like I have. Okay, so now you should have you should have uh, put this into Excel, or you can just watch. If you didn't pause the video and put it in, you can just watch what I did. But you can see that I have A and B, and I didn't re repeat it. I just have it right here, and then the constants go in front of those two variables. I have the inequality and the equalities right here. And then on the other side, uh, the right-hand side, constants over here. And this is constraint A, B, and C. So that, so it wants us to do a separate graph for each one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, constraint A. And I'm going to do, um, to, in order to graph something, we need two points. So I'm going to go point... Uh, one and point two, and um, so let's just start out with uh, point one. Let's if we look at this. Let's look at this. Look at this problem. We'll look up here. Three times a plus two times b. So if a was zero, what would b have to be? Well, 2 times 9 would be 18 if this is an equal sign. So let's just try 0 here. And let's just write this in terms. Algebraically, we're going to write B in terms of A. So if I write B in terms of A, I have to subtract 3A from 18 and then divide the whole quantity by 2 to get B by itself, right? Right? I subtract 3A on both sides. That cancel it over here, put it over here. So it would be 18 minus 3A. Put parentheses around it by 2 and you have B by itself. So we're just going to do that here. We're going to go equals um, 3 times what our A is right here. Because we're writing in terms of this, right? And, you know, let me do it a little different. Let's do it. With, we'll start out with equals equals 18, right? And we're going to put a parentheses in, in front of it because we want to divide everything. And then we're going to subtract 3 times whatever A is, I'm going to close the parentheses, and I'm going to divide it by whatever is in front of the B, which is this 2. And we get 9. So that, that checks, right? We have 0, 9. And let's just copy this point down. So I'm going to copy it down. Let me put the formula in here. Formula text we're going to use. And if I copy this down, I want, this is very easy. I'm going to still leave this zero because I want to check it. And this time we're going to, we have to drag these up, right? Because they go up here. We want this to be the same equation. You can see it's the same equation. The only thing is this point is using 16. This point is using 16. And this is point uses 15 for A. So I have two different points. So we have the zero nine. And what if we make uh, B0, if we make B0, A would have to be 6, right? Because 3 times 6 would be equal to 18. So let's put 6 in here and see if we get 18. I mean, let's put, yeah, put 6 here and see if we get 0. So, so we got that. So now let's just go ahead and graph these. So I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to go insert. And probably the easiest way to graph this is to go to the scatter chart. So you're going to go to the insert tab. And then you go here where it says scatter chart. I'm going to do it where it connects it automatically. And we get this graph. Let me shrink this graph down a little bit. 
and for chart title when I click on chart title I could go up here once I click on that I go here I can take an equal sign we'll call it constraint A that's gonna put that in there now let's just check is this six zero well there's a problem here right because this is zero six it's not six zero now one thing I didn't say I'm going to pretend A is my x-axis and B is my y-axis, right? Because that's, you do x, y when you do it. So we'll just say, this is my x-axis, this is my y-axis. So, um, instead of being, this isn't 6, 0, 0, 6, so I have to swap this. Well, that's pretty easy to do if you go up here. If you click away from the chart, there's, there's some, uh, it's not going to work. You're going to click on the chart. And then you get this contextual menu called Chart Tools. You want to go into Design, and we're going to go Switch Row and Column. And this goes vertical now, and you can see now we're 6, 0, and the other one is 0, 9. All right, so we have graphed this, but the problem is there's nothing in here that says that we have to stick to the positive quadrant, right? It doesn't say A and B are greater than or equal to 0. So I have to extend this over. So maybe I should go here instead of starting at 0 for x. Let's go over into the negative quadrant. Let's go like a negative 10. And then also I want to extend this one down. So I'll extend this maybe out to a positive 15. You can see the graph automatically adjusts for us, which is quite nice, right? And now we can see a little bit more that's going on. Now theoretically, this is just defining this infinite line. And then we just have the two points here. So now the next thing we want to do, we, we have to figure out the feasible region. Is it below the line or above the line? And the best way to do that is to test a point. So we could test this 0, 0, because 0, 0 is easy to plug into an equation. So I can go up here, um, 0 times 3 plus 0 times 2. Well, this is 0 plus 0, 0 plus 0, 0. Is 0 less than 18? Yes, it is. So that means we would shade towards this 0, 0, because it's true. So... Probably the easiest way, instead of shading it, what I like to do is I like to go to Insert, and we'll go to Shapes, and I'll draw a little arrow. I want to shade it this way, and I'm going to copy that arrow, and then I'm just going to go here, I'm going to go Control V, and pull it over here, Control V, pull it over here, keep hitting Control V and moving them. And that's basically saying we're shading that way, right? So this is the way the feasible region is down. Now, it includes the line, so this is a solid line. And we have an equal sign here. If the equal sign isn't here, I'd want to make this line dotted. Okay? And uh, the way I make it dotted is you would right-click right -click on that line. And... Uh, uh, I think it's outline, and there's other ways to do it. We, an outline, my mouse isn't working very good here because I have that program. But you're going to go into here and go dash. But we're not going to use a dash line. I'm just going to show you. So that's how you would make it dash. But in this case, it is a solid line because the equal sign is there. It includes a line. So my feasible area is a line that goes into infinity that way, to infinity that way, and is shaded down. It includes a line. And the y-intercept looks, I think we figured out it was a 9, and the x-intercept was like a, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. We have, but we could go get back and get it if we wanted to. So that's basically how you would do that. Now you would repeat this for for the second one, right? So I'm going to I'm gonna take all these. I'm going to copy it. This is the beauty of Excel. I can copy this down. But the only thing is, these have to point to different places now, right? The, now these have to point to here, right? We run our second constraint. And this one, if I double click, these have to point to here. Oops. Try that again. You got one. This one has to, we'll drag it up to here. Okay. And and then uh, we could check the intercepts on this just to make sure it's right. If this 
if this was zero, then this would be 60, I believe. All right, so we could try uh, zero here, and we get 60. And if we say, if this is zero, then this would be 40, because 40 times 12 is 480. So if I put 40 here, whoop, if I, maybe I got that wrong. Let's see, 40 times 12. Something's bothering me here. If this is zero, four times twelve is forty-eight. Forty. Hmm. Um, okay, I had to pause the video and see what I did wrong. So I made a mistake when I put this formula in. I should have, instead of putting a 3 here, I should have clicked on the 3 here, right? Instead of putting a 3 here, I should have clicked on the 3 here. That way when I copied it down, so let's copy these two formulas down. So I'm going to copy these down. That's why it's always good to check here. So let's make sure now this has to go up to here, here, and here. Right? And then this one has to go up to here. Because we're on constraint B, right? So we're going to make them in a relative position. This is the beauty of Excel. So, now if I put 40 in here, I have 0. So I checked it. So now let's, I'm going to copy this. And I'm just going to paste it down here. And we're going to modify this graph. So I'm going to click on this line. Instead of pointing to these two, I'm going to point to these two. Okay. And then uh, you can see that this is correctly. It's a 0, 60. And I'm going to get rid of these lines because I don't know which way this shades right now. And then I'm going to click on here. Instead of equals A, I'm going to equals constraint equals what this says. And I'm going to change this to constraint B because that's what we're working on. Okay, so very quickly I was able to duplicate this and then graph the new, the new thing. But again, we want to go into the negative, negative here. So I'm going to go less than zero. So maybe I should go uh, minus 40. And I also want to go down below here because I want to, I want to see the whole graph. So I'm going to, here I might go to 80. And now you can see we have the whole thing graph. And, uh, now we have to check our points. So let's just check 0, 0 again. So 0 times 12 plus 0 times 8 is 0 plus 0, 0 plus 0, 0. Is 0 greater than 480? No, it's not. So this is going to shade away because that's not true. So I'm going to go insert, shapes. I'm going to do an arrow again. Now I'm going to do it this way, right? It's, it's going that way. And let me copy that arrow. I'm going to go control V, control V, control V, and just kind of drag these around. I guess they're kind of pointing the wrong way. We want to kind of point them per perpendicular. Put as many arrows as you want. I'm not going to put very many arrows for the purpose of this. But you can put as many arrows as you think looks good, right? Now, the other thing is we didn't label the axes, so that's another thing we could do. 
if you wanted to label the axes, which you probably you should do. Again, I'm going to go up here into Design. And I'm going to go Add Chart Element, Axis Title, Horizontal. And I'm going to call the horizontal axis. Remember, we were saying the horizontal axis is, e is equal to A. Right? And then that puts an A here. And then I go add chart title. Axis title is vertical. And I'm going to go equals. I'm going to click on B because B is what we set our vertical axis to. And you can do something very similar to this chart up here. All right, now we have one last one to do. So let's go ahead and uh, copy this down one more time. And we'll paste it here. And now it's constraint C. And let's go ahead and uh, where are these? Where should these point now? They should point here here and here and this one should point we're on our third constraint now right here here and here and we'll copy the graph again just to see what's going on and um, <clears throat> This constraint C. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to delete this. Then we go equals this and then enter. And that puts that down. And um, so it looks like it's graphed us pretty well. Uh, we could check the just to see it, make sure it's correct. If this is zero, then B should be 20, right? Because 10 times 20 is 100. So let's check it. 0, 20. And if this is 0, B should, we need to have 40 here. So if I put 40 here, and then, so now we, we know that intercepts are correct, right? So, uh, but now we have to make sure this is in the right spot. Let's go ahead and drag these down. Now we're on this graph. And then again, we want to go maybe a, a minus 40 here. And this X, whoops, not that. We will go um, minus 40 for the whole thing. And then, of course, we want to extend the X this way. So this goes down here. Maybe we could put 80 here. Now, uh, it's interesting how this one, how it didn't bring these little arrows with. But in, in this case, we don't need the arrows, do we? Because what does the formula say? It says equal, so it has so only place that's feasible is exactly on the line. So it'd be like that. So we've answered our we've answered it. So anyway, hopefully that made a little bit of sense on how to graph things. Um, you can use the intercepts to kind of see where they go. Sometimes it gets a little tricky if it's going right through the origin because your intercepts don't work that way. But that's not we're not going to do that in this problem. But so that's one thing you might want to think about. How would I graph it if, without the intercept, right? Um, maybe you could put zero, zero, and then some other point, right? And try to figure it out. But, all right, so um, hopefully that helped. And look out for another. If you're in my class, I'll probably do another problem like this, too, and put it on YouTube for you to watch.